So this is actually a 283 stroker. Yeah. That's it. Hey, I'm Richard Holder. By now, you should already know that. You've come to this channel and it says Richard Holder. So I'm Richard Holder. While you're here, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. So you get notified when I do all this testing. Raise your hand if you're interested in a small block Chevy 283 dyno test. Actually, it's not a 283. It's a 283 stroker. But why would you build a 283 stroker? Well, it's a little something they call drivability and fun that I mentioned. It's chock full of dual quality goodness. I thought you were interested. Let's check it out.
see what it's doing? Yeah, yeah this choke pull off I had was catching here. Do you have the choke just wired open or? Yeah, I do. You want to just zip tie it? No, I'll just tie it. One of the carburetors has a choke on it, right? Huh? Does just one of them have a choke? Yeah. We can just zip tie that open if you want. I think he, he moved it. Yeah. Okay. Kind of needs more of a hook on it or something to keep it in place, right? Yeah, I thought that. You see a little tang here? Yeah. Looks like it should be on the other side of that. But. Oh, okay. Oh, I see something too. Those things I might not have tight enough. Okay. See, this one is not in the position it was in. Yeah. It's more like about there where I had it. Okay. Okay. It's a funny little thing. It's just a, a not the screw touching the shaft. It Is that putting doesn't... tension on it? Yeah, I have some. Something like that too. Yeah, it caught. Pissed it off. Okay. Yeah, the screw doesn't hit the shaft. It hits like just a flat piece of metal against the shaft, so it has okay. no grip. I like the clear uh, fuel bowl there, the filter. So the bowl. Is that working? Yeah. Well, see, the deal is vacuum holds them down. I might reverse some damn things, you know what I mean? No. Nah, see, that's all it travels, really. Ah, see, it comes out of there, see it? Does this one come out of there too? No. Okay. I'm also checking this to make sure. See, it can pop out of there, see it? This one, not so much. Yeah. So this one's gonna get tweaked a little more. It's almost like I should have them the other, you know what I mean, on the other side. Yeah. Which I may do. Ah, uh, no, it needs to be there for that. Okay, well. Just gotta find a sweet spot there. I know. Yeah. Okay. Happy with that? Happy with both of them? We'll try that. Draw yeah. over, turn in where you want it. Yeah.
Okay guys, here's what happened when they finally got everything adjusted on the two uh, WCFB carburetors, you know, the dual quad Chevy. This was actually going in a 61 Corvette, and so the guy wanted to drive it around. It wasn't going to be a daily driver, but he did want to drive it, and so, you know, rather than go with the 283, which is not a bad motor, but let's face it, it's small. It doesn't make any torque. So instead of that, he put a 283 stroker motor in it, meaning it's just a 350, basically. This one was 353 inches, thanks thanks to a slight overbore. Like we said, it had the dual quad um, 61 induction system because this is actually going in a 61 Corvette. And he wanted to make that work so that it looked like, you know, period correct. And that's, you know, there's awesomeness with a dual quad when you lift the hood. This thing did have the trick flow aluminum, um, you know, reproduction kind of well they're not even reproductions because they're so much better than a factory fuel head but they're designed to look like the fuel head in aluminum but they flow nearly 260 cfm so they're way better than any sort of factory fuel head and they're aluminum they've got a better chamber design all of that stuff this one had uh i thought he said it was 10 and a half they're showing 10.25 here it did have good forged internals um from from the guys over at scat both the rod and the crank and CP forged pistons. We ran the dyno headers on it. As we mentioned, it did have the uh, a pretty good size solid roller cam. In fact, everybody there thought, hey, that cam is way too big, including me. But when you look at it, it worked, it worked actually very well. We had roller rockers and all that stuff on it. So here's uh, once they got the um, all the hangers and the rods and the... Um, dual quads link, linkage all adjusted so everything returned and was working properly. Here's what happened. This thing made... 416 horsepower, good little 350, 420, 430 foot-pounds torque, which is really good. I mean, the dual quad manifold, um, everybody was concerned when he first put this on there that, hey, how well is this thing going to work? Is it going to flow enough? Is it going to support the power? Is it going to be problematic? And as you can see, they went through, you know, some trial and error, getting everything worked out just right, which is normally the case, especially when you're trying to run something that was made back, back in the 60s. And, you know, this stuff is very, very expensive now. These dual quad manifolds, I was talking to the guy and he said, yeah, this... He said it had been so much easier just to put like a modern like induction system on there. But the owner wanted this because it was going in a Corvette. They wanted it to look right. And then they had to go through the trouble to make it actually work right. And they did exactly that. Our picture holder, please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. Dual quaddy goodness.